Okay, we're going to do one uh, here on the uh, fleur de lis. Uh, the fleur de lis, you know, that's uh, here in America, we know it is the symbol of the uh, Saints, the football team. And of course, why would that be? Well, the Saints um, use this symbol. And that it goes back to France. And that France embraces this as their symbol. It's either an iris or a lily. Where you always see these things showing up. And so I've got ancient books over here. Ancient armor books. Ancient symbolism books. Ancient shield and heraldry books for uh, weapons and uh, all of these things. And of course many of those had little symbols on to and stuff. And a lot of them are extremely telling um, about the people. What their belief systems are. You know... Uh, Things like that. Pictures on people's shields. Things that are attached to their weapons. Things like that. They want to invoke their God in those. Definitely. And so they they utilize things like that. Uh, you know, they put the symbol of their belief as their strength on their shield, on their sword. So you used to see the tangs, the little bottoms of swords and stuff at the end where at one time it was just a little ball it started being weird little things like oh lion's heads and bird wings and things like this and so you get different depictions out of it but let's talk about the fleur de lay and its symbolism and how far it goes back and i guess i'm not really you know leaving much to <laughs> to woo i'm gonna show you this big reveal at the end uh, I don't work that way sometimes. Sometimes people get pissed off if they don't uh, start getting to the point. So let's get to it. You can see the circles here that have been done in the picture. And they're, both of these circles have a fleur de lay in it. You can see the one that's down here. And you can see the one that's up here, even on top of his hat. So he has a fleur de lay on his hat. And this plant that they always keep growing here um, seems to change its shape somewhat over time. But... Quite often you'll see this fleur de lay picked at the bottom. Other times you do not. Well, so what is this fleur de lay? Well, it's a lily. And ironically, just to break through a little bit, this person right here is Enlil. Enlil and Inki were the two gods that started off the Sumerian pantheon. Enlil came and took over. He was the god of the air. He took Enki, who was the god of the earth, and relegated him to being the god of the abyss, the waters, and the abzu, and became Neptune with his trident, which looks like a fleur de lay. There are some odd things, though, that are shown in this. For one, the plant looks like a different type of plant than it usually does, and the trellis, instead of having its full matrix look to it actually just seems to be a stick or even more of a Christmas tree effect. You see this. Also it really doesn't look like it's doing too well, like it's extremely healthy. All of the buds and things instead of growing up are facing down. <coughs> Pardon me. They each have a cluster of three on each one and so you could say well those are baby lilies and you can see the babies growing up from the bottom out of that lily and so it shows that and this is them training that up a stick right this later becomes the tree that's the asherah pole and the religions and so on because they came over and didn't know what the hell the people had done here but they sure wanted to well they had some gods and stuff what's going on here so they started embracing this and next thing you know there's <clears throat> all kinds of tree worship and things going on that uh, relate back to Semiramis and uh, her having her son Demuzi, um, who would be reborn out of a tree each year, an evergreen tree each year. And the knowledge of this got passed down, but incorrectly somewhat. But I don't want to go that deep into this. Let's look at what symbolism we can just find here in this picture to show you differences from common Sumerian art if you watch it. Well, first of all, one thing that jumps out at you perhaps is that his attire and his pants, his robing, is different than normal. Also, the depictions of the wrist guards that he has that usually look somewhat like a wristwatch are slightly different, triple-banded, and so on. 
and then his hands are very telling. Normally, they have their hand in a cocked position, which is uh, to speak, and uh, people don't get that, but that's the ancient way that you would say that you're about to speak, and when people were speaking, they would put a hand up, look like a little bird hand, to speak. It's almost like a hand puppet, muck, 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 muck. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And usually this guy here, he'd have this, you know, he'd, he'd have his hand up like this. This is your little to speak. You'd put your hand up like this, your other hand usually on your elbow. You've seen this depiction before. Yes. Okay, so you see here how he doesn't do the thing like this, holding the uh, pine cone or pomegranate. It's, some people say in some of the pictures, but it's a pine cone. Um, he's not doing that. He's just standing there putting a hand at it. He looks like he's casting his hand, oh, I don't know, like Japanese people do whenever they pick up the money after a sumo match and you see them throw out their hand and cast back and forth. Very similar to the hand casting back and forth that you see in the Roman Catholic Church whenever they do the cross in front of themselves, things like that. This is what it appears that he's doing now, and apparently he's not feeding the tree of life correctly because it's wilting. And also... That bucket of water that he always has with him, the little, you know, what they call the bucket of pollen or bucket of water or things like that, is non-existent. Non-existent. You don't see it in this picture. Depiction, it's not even sitting on the ground, which sometimes if they have something in their other hand, we'll have it in the ground. Now, what's odd about this picture is what is in his hand is a little bit telling also. You know, hopefully this is showing up well in the video here, but what is in his hand is also showing up. That doesn't look like the same plant. They usually have the ability to make them look like the flat thing with the three, t the, you know, little peppers hanging off of it or whatever it is, and that's not what those things look like. They are all closed up, a bulb, and really look a lot like a poppy. In fact, a lot of the times the ones on the trellises that are all matrixed, which is just like somebody growing something on a lattice. This is indoor gardening. By the way, a hint for you, this is your hanging gardens of Babylon, where they just had hanging plants hanging around and stuff. And they're growing indoor plants. You do realize that this is way before the Bible, and that indoor house plants is kind of a weird thing to people that had only seen things grow naturally out of the ground, and had barely grasped the idea of taking seeds and putting them in a row, and things would grow in a row, and you would make and grow food off of the seeds that are created out of it, you know. And who brought that to people? These people. They're the ones that started first agricultures and things like that, but also by the time that anybody gets wind of agriculture, they're already doing indoor botany culturing and the little pine cone deal isn't that making different things isn't that genetically perhaps taking the blue one and putting the pollen on the white one and making a light blue one and maybe the purple one and the white one and some come out striped and pretty and doing these things and this is the genetics type thing that they were even already into with that domesticating animals. You know, the wild cow ended up becoming a cow today, and it's because of domestication and breeding and things that these people were pulling off with their wheel and mathematics and astronomy way before anybody else even knew what a wheel or, you know, they all thought that the planets were still gods. In fact, these people are the ones that brought that, too. They named their gods for the planets that they had in reverence to them, and uh, really not so much like a crazy worship thing, but just like in a reverence to them, and uh, for remembrance. And it got turned into a religion that we have today with all the different planets. You know, like Greek and Romans used to worship Saturn and all the planets as being the primordial gods that created everything. Saturn was the god that ate all of his kids, except for the storm god Zeus, who came back and prevailed and did all that, if you remember Greek lit. And, of course, the Canaanites called him El. And then uh, whenever you look in the Bible and you're trying to figure out, you know, who this Yahweh guy is and everything, and you find out that every single creature in there has got the last part of their name is El, and sometimes in the front, as in Elijah, you know, 
How about the Elohim? That's the council of gods. Or the house of God would be Beth El, and Beth would be the home or house of, and God's name is El. Or the prophets named Ezekiel and Nathaniel, you know, El Elijah. People don't seem to make this connection, but it's the white elephant in the room. Uh, look at my video on white elephant in. Let's see, white elephant in the Bible. People say that. It says white elephant in the Bible. It's been staring at you the whole time because El and Saturn were the god Kronos and he was the god of time. They said that he had been a satyr. Kronos was the Kronos the Phoenician and this is Phoenicians. That's where that's right there where the Bible's made at and stuff. So that can actually lead you to the truth. Although it's been hidden for thousands of years now. I digress. Look at my other video, though, if you would. Let's get back to Fleur de Lays and the French people all the way from Babylonia. Now, these Babylonian gods were said to have been Caucasian. Inky's got blue eyes and Anna's got green eyes. Then they say when she gets mad, her eyes turn red. But that's a, a bullshit thing because um, that's a wrong depiction later because the early depiction said that her hair was like fire and red. Her eyes were green. And when she gets mad, da da da. Well, then the people said, "Oh, her eyes turn red." No, I know that word's right next to that, but the, it, there's no comma back then. But it says her hair is red, her eyes are green. But I digress. Oh, and An had blue green eyes, you know. And uh, I don't think it ever describes what Nana has or Ninharsag as far as eye color. But Inky has blue eyes. That's shown in quite a few things. There's even a description of him where he's got his, you know, tanning golden skin and uh, blue eyes and auburn hair that becomes light in the sun's da-da-da and all this stuff whenever they're given some bravado. And they say it over and over again, you know, because he's, you know, they start talking about how badass he is and all the things that he does and everything that he's over. And they always say it like twice, uh, you know, like they do. But anyhow, that looks like an opium puppy. He's got a fleur de lay on his hat. He's doing an odd casting. The plant's not doing well. It's really not doing too well. There's a fleur de lay at the bottom. And, hmm. So there's fleur de lays all the way back to ancient Sumerian stuff. You know? Yeah. And you can look at Inky and see a lot of these depictions. And you'll see artwork and just chunks of things. That if you look closely at this... These are triple depictions of a fleur de lay. You can see that, right? One, uh, let me do it with my pencil here. The one, two, the third middle thing, and they're going all up. Are these that are facing down that if I could just flip the video would be facing up and being a fleur de lay that you're real common with? And these are hanging down in this picture, and I wonder if that's what we're looking at before with the three things hanging down. I don't know. The picture before, I really think instead of drawing three individual finger peppers, these people have the ability to draw the fleur de lay look like this facing down if they wanted to, and that plant doesn't look like it. It doesn't have the bell bottom on it and things. You know, it just really doesn't. Although that does look somewhat like the thing that he holds in his hands, but the bulbs aren't closed over in a round knot with just some stuff poking out the end that makes it look like a poppy. You know, so that's kind of odd and different, and you know, and... He's often depicted, you know, carrying the goats and doing the things, and he's the um, shepherd of men at this time, you know. But uh, let's not go all the way there. Here's what I'm talking about whenever I say that big trellis. And this is not the most contrast to your good picture here. It looks like somebody took a shitty picture, blew it up. And anyhow, so you see the large trellis effect up here, and it's not just the one stick, but it's got ones on the side that help hold it up, and the plants grow like a vine between this. This really looks like a lattice, like my mom had out behind her house where we were growing trumpet vine on and so on. And if you'll look, there's a fleur de lay there, there's a fleur de lay there, and there's a fleur de lay that's glorious coming out the top of this thing, and all these side things look very fleur de lay ish, but they have a couple extra petals. Well, you look at a fleur de lay and they have the extra petals. Little in between sticking out. That's where they put shoots out of. But uh, here's the normal depiction where this hand, instead of holding a dead part of the plant, 
is holding the water bucket, or the bucket of the water of life, or whatever, and you find these things, and they actually don't even have a hole in them, they're just symbolic somehow, and I don't know how they would water the plant that way, but each one, a secret to those things too, is that each one usually has a little symbol on them, or a set of symbols, and that tells you which God was in control of the time, or which one they're doing the continuation for, and the praise for and this just goes along with the temple and whose temple it is but you can see they're using the pine cone here to individually touch and pollinate the plants and here they are this one's actually touching it he's actually going mwah, 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 right there in there pollinating it and what they're supposedly doing is dipping it in the pollen and dipping it in the plants and or that's a water bucket and they're watering the indoor house plants but now we show this strange legging too, and everybody always says that shows you they were using some type of advanced um, exoskeleton stuff and everything. I think they're just being real intricate with musculature here, but uh, some of these pictures like this and stuff really almost show through the bone. You're like, what the hell is this? They've really dug in deep whenever they're showing the musculature, a little bit deeper than they should compared to a lot of other places where they show none. But I digress. So in Lil and Lilies because the lily is the fleur de lay, and no one really has made that connection, but there it is. Um, and there's a few depictions down here. Let's see if I can find any that have more of a... Uh, that thing's a fleur de lay, and this is the new sprouts that are coming out of it. You can see that, and it's sitting up on a pedestal, like a house plant, with some more plants around it. Right? And this is saying that this is an Apkalu. This is one of the Apkalu priests. And apparently he's bending down or doing something with that plant. I don't know what he's doing to do it. And he's putting his foot over here like on that one something. I don't know if he's tearing the thing up. And that thing that they're always holding, that he's not holding one right now, is really that pine cone right there. And of course pine cones are this symmetrical incredibly built geometric shape but also in between each one of those whenever it opens it spits out little seeds you know and those can make new pine trees and it looks like your pine eel gland so kind of you know unique I guess but I mean you can see these all the way through time but let's see if I can go back up here I know whenever I was looking at that other picture, I saw a few of these things that really stand out. And so you can look at these ancient depictions and you can see that they have them in Persian Empire and they have them in Carthaginian Empire. You can see them in between all these things and there's the wheels of the sun with the eight spokes on it that's everywhere also. Mesoamerica, people, is that same fleur de lay on the hat on the top of this guy a fleur de lay with the two little things sticking out of it. These lilies, they're everywhere. It's rampant. They have this same ideology and it shows you that at one time we were all attached in some way and that people had the same little things. I mean, how could you have people just, you know, start grasping on lilies and then say that that was divine? There's a lot of flowers. There's a lot of flowers, you know, but then you know, this Nimrod depiction here, which is uh, our symbol of bringing in a branch into the cr in, in a clip cutting or a clipping to start in the fawn that is the starting of life. This is, um, you know, turned into our Christmas. This is actually our Christmas. Look at that. That's, that's you know, I mean, and I, I know he's got wings on and everything, but this is, uh, you know, the Christmas tree bringing the, okay, anyhow. Um, I've got a video on that too. Look at the Christmas. I've got one of Nimrod through Christmas and then Mithra and Jesus and how they attach Jesus to Christmas and stuff. But um, so all through these empires here, they have the fleur de lay from that point on. And there's a lot of them that are connected to the Sumerians and ancient beliefs. And of course, there's always three there. And there's a triad that's there. And it's one, two, three, and then down, down, down. And it's kind of as above, so below. You know, you can kind of get that idea, you know. And then 
you find out ancient Sumerians and stuff had this idea of the brain and your thalamus and your right and your left and the way that your pineal gland worked with the middle and how it looks kind of like a fleur de lay and you wonder if that whenever they kill people and they cut their head open and cut the brain open and they saw this cutting in the middle of it and the pine cone and the pituitary gland that they had known something about this and you know there's a lot of cannibalism back then would they eat that when when and you know, did that give you, did they think that gave you something? And, uh, yeah, yeah, they did. And, uh, so, this fleur de lay, I mean, you can see it in the hand of Christ here. Where is this from? For the Roman Catholic symbolism, where the, the sacred hand gesture is holding the fleur de lay. So that definitely has some French roots that are going into it. And you can tell the French people had come into the northern Levant area, which Levant is a French word. That whole thing is named for those people. They're part of the Caucasian races that are running through there that have blue eyes. I mean, you look at the Sumerians here. They have blue eyes that are made of lapis lazuli, you know. And uh, every one of them have these geeky blue eyes. It's because they tried to inset them. But uh, they're very enamored with that blue-eyed thing and the uh, blue thing, too. And you see it in all ancient cultures. I mean, Shiva and all these gods that were blue-eyed. They aren't even in cultures that have blue eyes. But 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 look, I mean, here we are in, in Mesoamerica again. Here we are in South America and the Incas. And... That's a fleur de lay of depiction of a triad triple, and it even has the little dot dot dots that the Sumerians have on the top of their structure. There's a, a few more things. I've got a, a video on Sumerian ancient Mesoamerican connections, and you can find them in there. Um, there's a few depictions of them. Here, check this out. Here's where you look at God and, God and goddesses and how they have the fleur de lay. This is all through Buddhism. And they have that same lily. There's even lilies on this door here that's supposed to have been the door that's never opened. The fleur de lay is on the little crowns that are on here. He's got a fleur de lay on the top of his Buddha staff. Shiva has the trident that has the fleur de lay look. This has the fleur de lay look. Poseidon has the fleur de lay look. This guy, which said it would be their god, has a fleur de lay on the top of his head. So, apparently this runs pretty rampant, you know. Um, even some of the depictions where his hands are holding that, you know, messed up thing that look like poppies. Here look like they're frayed out like a brush. But there's three of them there. And I don't think that's a lily... You know, but I digress. But they're usually carrying these little water buckets here, and their armband has a better watch on it than that original picture I showed you a moment ago does. Again, I'll just flash to it, but if you see here, his hand's just doing that. He's holding onto these. They're wilted. Plant's not doing good. Fleur de lay, fleur de lay on top. And all these ancient cultures have fleur de lays. You know, Buddha, Asia, all the way through uh, Mesoamerica, as I've shown you already, too. And you can see a big one right here in this. This is, a, you know, in, in Mexico, where they have this little... And you've seen it depicted in Mexico in the arts a lot. And you know, oh, what? That's a fleur de lay look. And this isn't after we got to America. This is what the Aztecs and stuff were worshipping and using in their parts of worship. I don't know if they're worshipping the damn flower, but even the little flower on top of him, it's always on top of the blade. That is a fleur de lay. I mean, you can get a few different weird depictions, like over here if it's showing up, that little one right there, yeah. But there's fleur de lays, you know. Fleur de lay, fleur de lay, fleur de lay in the Buddha. And the mushroom symbolism, too that uh, is really just a stick with a tabletop, and they call it mushroom symbolism. But they did make it look a little like a mushroom and create off the top. I believe people would pour water on it and make it look like it was raining over the god in the hopes of rain, but I digress. Um, even, even, you know, Viracocha himself, I believe, this is 
the uh, Tehoakan ruler here. And you can see him with the little poppy things. Right? There's the little poppy things. And then on top of his head is the triple little fleur de lay idea. So, it is rampant. It is rampant. All these old uh, lion statues. And inside his mouth, fleur de lay. Fleur de lays on the side. Painted blue. More often than not, painted white. The first colors of the French were red with white fleur de lays, and it grew from there. Ancient coins depicting it. You can find it in old symbolism like this stuff here. Wall reliefs. That plant itself. This is ancient. Ah, it's Acadian. Yeah. You know, something Acadian or shortly after. Looks almost Thracian, maybe Greek. Um, here, uh, there was one other picture up here I wanted to show you. Oh, so you think it doesn't have that much to do with Sumerians. And then you look at this and there's Dagon himself with that fleur de lay on top of his head. Right there. Dagon's the fish god that he started humanity down in Phoenician area. So it's rampant and something to embrace something to look into, definitely, because a fleur de lay does look like a, a Rarartian tree of life that actually had three blades on it, Poseidon's trident, the Tishul of Shiva, which is really just the same trident look, you know, is this, is this that same symbol, and it, it appears to be that same symbol, and you know, all I really did looked up here was Enlil and Fleur de Lay, and it's showing me Enlil and Fleur de Lays. And then I, what's funny is, is if you look up Fleur de Lay, you'll never see a picture of Enlil. And if you look up Enlil, you'll never see a picture of Fleur de Lay. But if you do both of these, all of a sudden you start seeing Enlils with Fleur de Lays. And there's always this lion attached to it. Enlil has a lion. There's the Fleur de Lay with the lion. And I, I believe that was a, a joining of two groups of people as one that I could go into deeper. But, uh, you know, even even in, well, where's the tablet at? In the, in the famous tablet that everybody goes into, you can actually see that Enlil always has a lion just behind him. Uh, whenever, the one where they're showing Shamash come up through the, the, the mountains to uh, signify December 25th and the rise. There was one here. Dun, 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 dun. There's, there's got to be, man. You just go through for a minute looking at it. There's lions, lions. And the little bird there looked like a fleur de lay, but it was made into a bird. Did you see that? Um, oh, I'm just going to go right past it, trying to think of two things at once, but I don't see it, people. Anyhow, there's a common depiction. You've seen it where it's got, this is from it right here. Where you can see Inky standing there. There's a two-faced god over here on the side. Ninurta. So on. And shows Inanna on the left-hand side of the two mountains. On the left of her is another god. And then it shows Shamash coming up through the middle. And in doing so, the guy on the far left is Enlil. And he's always got a lion with him. So there's your lion depiction that goes with it. And Fleur de Lays. You know, there's a French cathedral place right there, Fleur de Lay. Fleur de Lay. And people believe it had something to do with Humbaba and the story of Humbaba. And uh, Gilgamesh and how they had killed off Humbaba. And that Humbaba would have actually been somebody who would have been a Levant, a Levite priest. Those people lived this, yeah, those ended up being, yeah, the Levants were Caucasians. Lys means lily. The fleur de lys means lily. There's a river named the river Il, and there's a river called the uh, the river Lys. And they say, well, that's where they have the, the fleur de lys is from that. And you can look at these ancient shields and depictions, and I'm not going to go through this and stuff, but they're showing you where 
all these famous places are. There's giant lists of them. Like Leon. Like as in El Leon. By the way. In France. Yeah. And how this all comes out of it through the... The ancient coat of arms of France was red and white. Then they went with the gold and blue. Kind of changed it up and took on different colors of the empire, as they say. But, uh, you know, very elaborate fleur de lace. I've got a book that's got some different ones like these. But this is one of the most elaborate there totally is. And it was at the beginning. They started being a little less elaborate and a little more number-wise. And what the three or the three meant, or two and three or five and three, anyhow origins of all this and you can even see a Dervon stone that has two lilies attached to it and it has a magic to it this is supposed to have been the magic weapon that was created here we go with the lily and as above so below you see this I don't know if you can see it over here at the side can I do this and get to where you can see it let me zoom in for you Something like this, where the lily, and it's as above, so below. As above, so below. There's all these ancient places that are through here that you can look. Just look up Fleur de Lay and Wiki it. And it'll show you all these places through Peria, Persia, Sparta, all the way to the Druids, all the way down, and, and Paris itself. Paris, and there's a whole thing about Paris I don't want to go into now either because I'm trying to end the video instead of going to stuff and words here just jumping out at me like like Saku. Places that um, have names like Magi. And how it took to Brahmini and Brahma. Vedic Buddhist symbols modified into the Christian fleur de lay. They even used to have maces they would beat your ass with at the end of the mace had a little fleur de lay symbol onto it. So, you know, um, and oh, yeah, here's another Babylonian depiction, just by the way. This is the ancient gate of Inanna, the Ishtar gate itself, and Three stacked fleur de lays making the top of a date palm, and the entire thing is ringed with fleur. The entire thing. All set in lapis lazuli. And this is the incredible gate. These are the gateway to the gods. So, yeah, quite interesting. Fleur de lay. You can look into it deeper. I mean, I looked into it back in Herald the Heraldry, trying to figuring out how I would do the cast system of the Dark Ages whenever I was running a Dungeons and Dragons campaign and got all these armor things onto it and made all these connections. But then I found by investigating the Fleur de Lay that they said that it came from all these things that you see listed in Wiki. The difference is, is that whenever you start to study other ancient civilizations and cultures, it's right in your face. And it goes back much farther than they originally told you. Enjoy. Like if you like. Watch another video. Check some out.